Hey everyone, welcome back to the feature specific tutorial series for the Unbroken Software Studios YouTube channel. My name is Brad and today we're going to be taking a look at controller automation. Now this used to be called something different. I don't quite remember the previous name, but essentially this allows you to do a couple of things when you're opening your emulators in LaunchBox and big box. The supported controllers for this feature is the Xbox 360, the Xbox One, the PS3, and the PS4 controllers. The PS3 and PS4 controllers are supported through software like Input Mapper. You can uh, Google Input Mapper or the link will be in the description below if I can remember to put it there. And essentially all it does is installs some drivers for you when you plug in your controller and your computer will think that your PS3 or PS4 controller is an Xbox 360 controller. So let's go to tools, options. We're going to scroll down to where it says input and then gamepad slash joystick. If this checkbox is not checked, go ahead and check enable gamepad slash joystick input. If you use multiple controllers, go ahead and check the box, use all attached controllers. However, for this purpose, I'm going to go ahead and use the controller that says Xbox 360 for Windows. And again, I'm using my PS4 controller, as you saw in Input Mapper. If you are using an Xbox One controller, however, please use the X input Xbox as there may be issues otherwise. Once this is checked, head on over down to the automation tab. Go ahead and check the box to use controller automation to control windows outside of LaunchBox. It is set up a little bit more differently than you may assume. Where it says hold this button, you are going to press that button and then you're going to press one of the other four buttons right below. So think of the hold button as your on button. Once you press that button, the other four buttons will then activate. This is obviously good so that way you're not just pressing buttons trying to play a game and you're increasing and decreasing your volume. If you have a joystick with enough buttons on it, you could potentially assign these buttons to very specific and separate buttons away from the buttons that you use to play your games with. However, I'm going to be using the PS4 controller so I wouldn't be able to no. If you check the box to use all attached devices, keep in mind that the button assignments to each button ranges from one through however many buttons are on your controller. Since I'm using the Xbox 360 button assignments more or less, any of the four controllers I previously mentioned should have the same button assignments. However, if you use another controller like any of the Logitech third-party controllers, the button assignments may be different, so you may need to reassign these depending on your controller and or joystick, fight stick, or arcade control system. So I'm going to click where it said button 10 with my left mouse button, and that's going to ask me to press the button on my controller. I'm going to use my right stick on my PS4 controller, and if you've played PS2, PS3, or PS4, this is commonly referred to as the R3 button. If you've played Xbox, Xbox 360, or Xbox One, this usually is referred to as the RS with the little joystick icon right below it. So I'm going to go ahead and press my right stick in, and then I'm going to press my modifier buttons. To close the active window, I'm going to use my L3 button or my left stick click in. To show launch box, I'm going to use L1. Increase volume, I'm going to use triangle or Y. And then to decrease volume, I'm going to use X or A. There we go. Now it's set in launch box. So let's go ahead, press OK. Let LaunchBox refresh itself, and we'll go ahead and test it on PPSSPP. It's also worth noting that some systems may have some quirks depending on the buttons you set it to. So for example, if I just press the right stick button, you can see that PPSSPP starts to speed up. It may be different in other emulators, uh, but in this emulator, that button speeds things up. So. If you are going to use the right stick button, keep that in mind. Um, other emulators use other buttons for different things that you may not have realized. So some emulators may need a little bit of extra finagling. So your setup may vary a little bit differently from mine. So I'm going to press RS and then LS. And there we go. It, it closed. Since PPSSPP has its 
own UI. You may have seen very quickly that the UI tried to show up. Uh, I may have had to click that twice or once and it would close. Um, again, some emulators do things a little bit differently. Some may have dialogues that pop up that require you to press OK. So in that case, you would just probably need to press right stick and then left stick once again to make that close. Or in some cases, if that doesn't work, you're actually going to have to manually click OK with your mouse. OK, let's head on over into Big Box. OK, so this is my pop up in Big Box. I am using a theme currently, so it may look different uh, compared to what you're looking or seeing. So just keep that in mind. But from the main Big Box menu, go ahead and press Escape on your keyboard or the B or circle button on your controller to head back into the menu. From there, head on down to Options. From there, head on down to Controller. Now, if you are already using your controller, you're good to already go ahead and set this up. If you're not using your controller in Big Box and instead you're using your keyboard, make sure to enable your game controllers and or use all controllers. Very similar to LaunchBox, but the settings are kept separately. See, for example, this controller automation. I just set it in LaunchBox, but it's not set in Big Box. So let's go ahead and use controller automation. The hold button is going to be my R3 button. The closed active window is going to be my L3 button. Show launch box is L1. Increase volume is triangle and decrease volume is X. So we're going to go ahead and back out. And we'll go ahead and select a different platform. So we'll choose the Nintendo DS. Unintentionally, I guess, choosing the two handhelds. So we're going to just test it on Final Fantasy Tactics A2. All right, so we're going to go ahead and play the game. And then we're going to press R3, L3. And there we go. It works. Who'd have thought? So that's how you get controller automation up and running in LaunchBox and BigBox. If you have any questions about anything that I covered in this tutorial, please leave a comment in the comment section below. Jason and I would be more than happy to answer any questions that you may have on anything in this tutorial. If you liked the tutorial and it helped you out a lot, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe for more videos and tutorials in the future. My name is Brad. If you liked the sound of my voice and I helped you out, the link to my channel will be in the description below. Please give me a watch. And if you like the things that I do over on my channel, I would appreciate a subscribe, some comments and some thumbs up, some, some love, if you will. Remember, fixing geeks to play more games and we'll see you next time. Have a good day.